Hey, and welcome to another session of the Daily Elastic Byte. Today we will talk about Kibana Lens, a not so new way anymore to create visualizations, and why it makes sense to switch everything over to Kibana Lens. So let's get started. As you can see here, we can now just start with our first visualization by using drag and drop and, for example, just take the timestamp of our 5-bit indices and take a look. I am currently indexing the Meetup RSVP live stream into my filebeat index, which means every document is a separate RSVP, and so now we can see the RSVPs in the last couple of minutes. So now we just see the number of RSVPs. We see it goes a little bit up and down, and like within half a minute we have about 20 to 30 reservations going on here. So one of the nice things with Lens is you can quickly change the kind of visualization. You can switch over to a table if you want, which is not too useful in our case here because we will just see the timestamps. We will get to this in a second. And we can finally also take a look at the number of records if all we need is a metric visualization. Let's do a little bit more. So let's create a visualization to see the number of different countries where reservations are made from or where the meetup groups are coming from. So you see here that Great Britain and the US have the biggest part of reservations. We can now easily switch the visualization here. Like We could take a stack bar chart, which I don't think offers a lot of overview. We could also just go with the tree map, which I think is much nicer. And of course, we can add more countries over here by just showing 10 different countries. This also will make the other part much smaller. So let's take a little look at the number of guests that people tend to RSVP with. So there's a dedicated field for that that contains an integer for the number of guests. Let's create this one for the vertical axis and see what the results are. So of course, the median of guests might not be extremely useful. Uh, the maximum would have been 5, again, this is not super useful, so probably we would like just to have intervals on our guest field. So create ranges over here, and this looks like a much better thing to have. We can also go back to have a count here, and we now see that there is a lot of RSVPs which don't have any guests at all, which is kind of natural. There's a few which have trained four guests, and I think it probably makes sense to ignore the zero guests. So what we could do over here is that we can just filter by the guests. This is KQL, so we can autocomplete things and say we would like the guest to be greater than zero as a filter. And you can see here now this is much more readable. Uh, we do see that there's 25 records which bring one guest, there's one record with three, and there's one record with five. And you will see over time that there are even sometimes RSVPs with 20 guests if this is allowed. The last part we can take a look at for the meetup data are the topics that are used. So for every reservation uh, there's uh, data about the meetup group and that one contains topic names. You can see here by clicking on it that there's various topics specified. We can just drag this over here and probably would like to add some more data. Maybe we go with 15 um, and take a look at that. Again, the visualization as a bar chart um, is not the most useful one. This is a really good use case for our table. Uh, it's sorted by the number of records. We can see like, social fun time, social networking, new in town, and there's a lot of outdoor sport things. Right now, during the pandemic, people probably prefer outside meetups instead of inside meetups. So they go hike, do sports, and so forth. So let's go for some more complex visualization, and that would be my metric beat data. So I'm indexing from my local system metric beat data into my cloud cluster. Uh, first, we want to visualize based on the timestamp, but now we're not interested in the count of records, but we are interested in the incoming bytes for my host. Uh, we are also interested in this being bytes. And of course, this should be a counter rate. 
and the second part we would like to have is also the counter rate but for the out bytes for my host so that would be this one and the value format should be bytes as well so that both are comparable and we can see here that we had a small peak where I downloaded something a couple of minutes ago even a bigger one over here uh, which also increased the outgoming uh, data because we had to acknowledge probably TCP packets so this means visualizing counters is also really easy and that brings us to our last example where we will take a look at file system data so again we would like to have the timestamp as a basic x-axis but the vertical axis should include the maximum of the file system used percentage so let's run this and we see that there is always the same value uh, where we have the 70 percent which makes sense because there's one file system filled up to 70 percent if that is the biggest one so we probably would like to break this down a little bit further and we could just specify the mount point for that and have top value let's probably increase this a little bit and then return refresh our data one last time and maybe have also lines and now we can see that indeed there's this one file system which is my default file system on my macbook uh, and then there are a couple of others all right, so this was the basic introduction into Kibana Lens. You can see that you can always start with just clicking uh, certain parts of your visualization together and dragging and dropping it in here. Uh, on the other hand, you can also go more advanced and use things like the counter rate, which used to be a time series visual builder feature, um, or like in this example, specifying the maximum and then breaking it down further. And you can always keep changing the type of the visualization, no matter how far you've gone in your way of visualizing your data, which is a huge difference to earlier visualizations. That's it for today. Thank you and see you next time.